morning students uh, we had just started off with the verses by robert frost and i told you a poem frost has said begins in the light and ends in a ends in wisdom and this particular poem is a typical example of it this illustrates how the the initial descriptions of a playful lad a rural lad going about swinging the birch trees and then uh, so that is the uh, rural activity of new england this was one of the most common activity among the uh, rural children of new england uh, in the beginning of the 20th century because they were far away from cities uh, where the other boys used to the urban boys used to play um, baseball they were not aware of such games so the only uh, only uh, sports for uh, these youngsters in the rural uh, new england was uh, swinging the birches and birches i said uh, has got a very pliable wood and therefore you can uh, climb up the tree and come down swinging one of those uh, branches to the ground and the branch would not break and once you uh, release the branch after you are on the ground then it just like a catapult it just shoots back to its uh, original position so that is the that is the delightful Uh, rural activity of a country lad that's where he begins his uh, poem birches and uh, then we had uh, read a few lines and i had explained them now let us continue let's proceed with the the rest of it anyway we shall read through the uh, from the beginning once just as a revision when i see birches bend to left and right across the lines of straighter darker trees i think i like to think some boy has been swinging them but swinging doesn't bend them down to stay as ice storms do often you must have seen them loaded with ice a sunny winter morning after a rain they clink upon themselves as the breeze rises and turn many colored as the stir cracks and creases their enamel soon the sun's warmth makes them shed crystal shells shattering and avalanching on the snow crust such broken heaps of broke such heaps of broken glass to sweep away you would think the inner dome of heaven had fallen so that's where uh, we have completed see look at once again look at those uh, images that we get from the first line for instance when i see the birches bent left and to the right so the the birch so its branches are uh, bent to the left and to the right unlike the other trees other trees which are distinguished by the lines of straighter darker trees the other trees are darker in color unlike the birch tree which is white it says and bend the other trees are straighter and darker i like to think some boy has been swinging them so what is what would the poet like to believe when he sees this birch trees uh, uh, with their uh, bent branches he says i would like to think some uh, rural uh, new england lad must have been swinging them and that's the reason why they are bent but swinging doesn't bend them down to stay as ice storms do but the truth is it is the work of the ice storms and not of a country lad and the point is aware of that but he would like to believe or imagine he would prefer to be in a world of imagination than in a world of reality 
he would rather uh, like to think that uh, a boy has been swinging the branches and that is the reason why that's the reason why these uh, branches are bent but he knows the truth it is the work of the eye stones and how does the eye stones do it often you must have seen them loaded with eyes a sunny winter morning after a rain and then he says and this is a common phenomenon in this part of the country or in this part of the world and he says so when you wake up in the morning after a stormy night of a rain you find the branches of these birch trees loaded with the heaps of eyes on them or loads of eyes on them they click upon themselves as the breeze rises and turn many colored as the stir cracks and crashes their enamel i says and they click upon themselves that look at that word click i said that's an example of uh, uh, the figure of speech onomatopoeia and here you have he says as the breeze blows what happens the branches strike against each other and as the branches strike against each other you could see the sun's rays refracted on the on this uh, ice that is covering the branches and as a result of that what happens it starts cracking and they turn many colored some of this ice are shed to the ground and uh, you will find the sun's rays uh, turning just like uh, when the rays of the sun is passed through a prism you, it turns many colored it similarly when the rays of uh, the sun falls upon these uh, ice crystals that are hanging on uh, the branches this is they also turn uh, the rays of the sun into multicolored soon the sun's warmth makes them shed crystal shells shattering and avalanching on the snow crust such heaps of broken glass to be to sweep away you would think the inner dome of heaven had fallen and then look at the imagery that he uses to describe what happens next the sun comes up and the sun's warmth increases and when the sun's warmth increases this ice melts this melting ice what happens they shed their crystal shells these uh, ice that is covering the covering the uh, branches of uh, birch trees the po poet compares it to crystals glasses all right and then he says they come down shattering shattering is a word that we use especially for uh, uh, breaking up glasses into tiny fragments and he says shattering and avalanche an avalanche in a, is a snow slide like in this part of the earth, uh, world we are used to uh, landslides this snow slide happens the snow the heap of the snow that is covering the branches comes sliding down or slipping down on the snow crust on the snow covered snow covered land it comes to the the land is also covered with the ice and that's why crust is a covering so the earth that is covered with the snow or, or that is turned hard into ice that's where this falls down this uh, such heaps of broken glass to sweep away you would think what would you think they are they fall down from the branches this uh, ice into tiny fragments and they come sliding down like a an avalanche and then they are shattered broken into tiny pieces tiny fragments i says and they look like a uh, fragments of glasses that are that are lying down and when there is a glass 
you need to sweep it away because it can pierce your heels. Okay, and therefore he says it's that's the reason you would think. And such a lot of glasses there on the ground. The amount of glass pieces, that is the ice that you find, fragments of ice, pieces of ice that you find, he says, you would think such a heavy lot is there that you think the inner dome of heaven had fallen. You would tend to believe the inner dome of heaven. Heaven is the sky. And the sky, if you look, uh, uh, it has got a circular, circular uh, base, that is the horizon, and then it has got a round shape, dome. So the roof of heaven has collapsed, collapsed and uh, fallen to the ground and broken into pieces. They are dragged to the withered bracken by the Lord and they seem not to break, though once they are bowed so low for long, they never right themselves. Okay, the next lines. They are dragged. The snow, the ice that has fallen down, they move. They move as far as the bracken. Bracken is a form. The fern that is still visible on the on the uh, snow ice covered earth, he says, to the bracken by the load by the loads. This uh, ice is uh, carried far and wide, uh, he says, and they seem not to break. So once they are on the ground, they do not seem to break. They stick together. They are uh, in continuous. Chain. Though once they are bowed so long, now what happens? These branches, the branches is affected by the burden of the snow and it is bent so low and it has remained in that position for a very long time throughout the night until the sun comes up and warms and relieves the branches of its load. It, uh, it continues in that position and because of that the birch trees branches are hanging to the, to the ground, hanging to the ground. They are touching the ground and though once they are bound for so long they never write themselves and the, the poet gives us an explanation. Why are the branches why are the branches unable to correct themselves? Because it has remained in that position for a very long time. Unlike the boy who swings the birches and brings the branch down to the ground, to the earth, and releases it, the loads of ice that had burdened the branches, they kept the branches in that position for a very long time and therefore they the birch branches are never able to right themselves. Right themselves means correct themselves to get back to their right position, to their original position. You may see their trunks arching in the woods years afterwards, trailing their leaves on the ground like girls on hands and knees that throw their hair before them over their heads to dry the sun. And then he says, and since these, uh, these branches, these branches have remained in that position for a very long time, they continue in that position. And years afterwards, you would be noticing this thing uh, happening there. And he says, uh, that, because of that, you will find them arching. Arching means bending down in an arch shape. In an arch shape. I says, and, and in the woods, years afterwards, and this shall continue for years to come, because they 
once they remain in that position for a long time, they are never able to correct themselves. He has told us that is natural and therefore, and then he uses a beautiful simile to compare their position. That he imagines, uh, he imagines these branches of trees that are arching towards the earth. He says, he compares them. You may see their trunks arching in the woods years afterwards, trailing their leaves on the ground. Trailing their leaves on the ground. That means dragging or uh, hanging their leaves onto the ground. And they are compared to girls on all fours. That is on your hands and knees. A girl after bath falling on her knees and hand and then throws her head, throws her hair over the head in order to dry her hair in the sun. A beautiful simile, a fantastic comparison he uses where the poet's imagination goes very wild. All right. So they are compared to, so the branches of trees that are hanging their leaves to the ground and arching to the earth is compared to girls who have just finished bath and they are standing on their knees and, and hands throwing their uh, hair over their head in order to dry them in the sun. All right? Before them over their, head, uh, over their heads to dry in the sun. But I was going to say, when truth broke in with all her matter of fact about the ice storm, I would prefer to have some boy bend them as he went out and in to fetch the cows, some boy too far from town to learn baseball, whose only play was what he could what he found himself summer or winter and play alone. Now, the truth is, it is the work of ice storms. Because of the ice storms, the branches of the birch trees are uh, bent so low or they are hanging their leaves to the ground and arching to the earth. But, he says, but I was going to say when truth broke in with all her matter of fact about the ice storm, all her matter of fact, that means plain idea of the ice storm. The idea of ice storm came to me. It is the ice storm that has in reality or in truth, truth is personified here, that's why it's spelled with the capital letter. So the truth intervened with me, with my imaginative thinking. The poet wants to imagine that the ice, it is the, it is some boy's work. But the truth intervened in my imagination. And she wanted me to believe, or uh, she challenged me with this idea of the ice storm that has been the cause of the birds hanging to the to the ground. But still, I should prefer to have some boy when the, the poet says, what is he says? I would prefer to have it be in the work of some boy and not the ice storm. That's what I would have rather preferred. As he went out and in to fetch the cows, and when did he do it? As he went in and out to catch the, uh, fetch the cows. Fetch means to bring back. Alright? Alright? So go and get back. So uh, herding was one of the activities of the rural children in the New England. Alright? His uh, cattle, he would be swinging these birch trees. Some boy too far from town to learn baseball. And who is this particular boy? A New Englander, a lad who is born and brought up in this part of uh, the US, New England. 
that was very rural area in the beginning of early 20th century all right when civilization uh, when uh, industrialization had not particularly taken over and then herding was one of the activities and as he went out he never knew what baseball was he was not aware of what baseball was or he had never learned of it or heard of it because it was a, a game among the urban children in the cities they played it but this new englander had never time for it nor did he have any any uh, leisure for it so he was engaged in uh, this activity of herding the cows okay and then some were too far from town to learn baseball whose only play was what he found himself his only play what is that that is the only game was nature the only sports that he found was you know nature so he was very close to nature and nature provided him with the entertainment that he required and this was one of the entertainments of his childhood whose only play was what he found himself found himself in the nature summer or winter and could play alone he could play at all weather conditions whether it was winter or a summer and he didn't need any companion for it he could play it all by himself unlike baseball which required nine a side right so nine player consisted of a baseball team and uh, they had four bases that was a that's a uh, game in uh, the us where you have to complete all the four bases in order to win the match okay now he is unaware of it this uh, rural child and uh, uh, here you notice uh, how close he is with nature and uh, how nature provides entertainment for this uh, this this child who is a child of nature so that's uh, one of the qualities of uh, frost he is uh, he is very much uh, he is very much he had a great affinity towards nature just like william wordsworth and uh, uh, this is the way he finds this explained okay one by one he subdued his father's trees by riding them down over and over again until he took the stiffness out of them and not one but hung limp not one was left for him to conquer all right now look at the next imagery that we read in this particular sentence or this uh, uh, these lines see the image of a conqueror the image of a triumphant conqueror so what did he do one by one he subdued subdued means defeated is an activity is a almost like a almost like a war he goes out there and defeats each of the tree father's trees every tree that was in the in the land of his father by riding them down over and over again he would climb on these trees again and again until he took the stiffness out of them stiffness firmness he had made it made every one of these branches so pliant so flexible so light that uh, it was it had become very easily bent he says every one of those trees and not one but hung limb and every one of those trees what happened to them they all hung limb that means they all bent down toward the earth because the boy had swung it uh, so very often and uh, so many times over and over that it had lost its stiffness and it had become so bent all right not one was 
left for him to conquer. There was not a single tree was left unconquered. There was not a tree that uh, he had not climbed and uh, swung on it. So he had been swinging the branches of these birch trees in his uh, father's wood, in his father's land. And that he has been doing so frequently that every one of those branches now stood bent. Then he learned all there was to learn about not launching out too soon and so not carrying the tree away clear to the ground. Then, so it's a, we learn here in this, in these lines we learn what we learn. It's a very skillful activity. He needed, he had mastered the skill of a swinging on birches. If you were too fast, you did it so suddenly, so abruptly, there was always the possibility you would break the tree or you would break the branch. It had to be done gently, slowly, skillfully. And that skill he had acquired, that's what we are told. He learned all there was to learn about not launching. All right? Launching means releasing himself as he climbs up the tree and then goes to the top and then he would release the top of the branch, the top of the tree very gently and slowly. And that's how he did it. Because he knew you should not release it too quickly. That would damage the tree. All right. And not so, and so not carrying the tree away clear to the ground. If you did it too quickly, what would happen? The tree would come breaking, or the branch would break. One branch would break and come down to the ground. That he didn't want to happen. He always kept his poise. Poise is balance. He kept his balance to the top branches, climbing carefully with the same pains you used to fill a cup up to the brim and even above the brim. So it was, a, it was an activity that needed such great dexterity, such great skill. And that's what he says. He always kept his balance as he ascended the ascended to the topmost part of the tree all right to the top branches climbing very carefully with the same pains you use pain is trouble okay or the labor that you use see the comparison that is is, is used there used to fill a cup up to the brim Filling a cup without letting it overflow the brim. You want it filled to the brim, but you do not want the water or uh, the liquid to overflow it. And so you do it very, very dexterously. The same way, even above the brim, even to fill it to, not only to the brim, even to even above the brim. Then he flung outward feet first with a swish, kicking his way down through the air to the bird ground. So, so he climbed to the topmost branch and then slowly he would come down, very skillfully he would come down, flung outward. He would fling himself, fling, flung is the past tense of fling. Fling means to throw oneself, here it means to throw oneself. He would throw himself and what would he do? Which part of the body first? First he would throw, feet first, throwing his feet first with the swish. The swish is that sound when uh, something is thrown through the air, that sound is produced that brushing sound, brushing with the 
here with the swish kicking his way down through the air to the ground and throwing his feet first he comes down throwing his leg as if he were kicking it in the air down to the air to the ground he would come so was i once a swinger of birches see look at the nostalgia that is expressed the poet is giving us an autobiographical element about his life he himself as a new england lad had been a person who enjoyed swinging birches and he wistfully thinks of those childhood days of innocence of freedom of a lightness of a carefree life in the midst of in the lap of nature right so it's a surprising revelation from the poet that he himself was a he himself was a swinger of birches as a child and so i dream of going back to be so he also wants to go back to those days of childhood and to enjoy those carefree lives in the lap of nature is that longing that uh, he wants to escape from the reality now he is an adult a mature person a mature person's life is not as carefree as a uh, that of a child he wistfully thinks of his childhood days and going back to those days okay it's when i am weary of considerations and life is too much like a pathless wood where your face burns and tickles with the cobwebs broken across it and one eye is weeping from a twig having lashed across it open when would when does this thoughts occur to him when does he long to go back to his uh, childhood days these are days the childhood days he would like to go back when it is when i am weary when i am tired of uh, worldly considerations worldly worries worldly tensions worldly difficulties it is then i would like to go back to those escape from this world of difficulties the world of pain the world of suffering to those world of, to the world of imagination the world of childhood it's a innocence and life seem to be too much like a pathless wood there is another simile the life of an adult is considered or compared to uh, a pathless wood a path without any directions without any purpose so we have a sample for instance uh, stopping by woods on a snowy evening all right and where he talks of uh, there were two two paths one that was untrodden and another that was followed by many okay so uh, this is a uh, an untrodden path path that is uh, lost it's a it's a it's a, a pathless wood there's no path if you want to go across you have to clear a path for yourself in this dense forest in this dense uh, wood that's what he says and then when you clear a path what happens where your face burns and tickles with cobwebs so in a dense forest in a thick uh, pathless uh, uh, as you try to clear the path in a dense wood what happens these are uh, when uh, you will find a lot of cobwebs and they are going to strike your face so you have to clear those cobwebs you have to clear those cobwebs broken across it and when it strikes against your face what happens these cobwebs 
it uh, it tickles it produces a slightly uncomfortable feeling it produces a uncomfortable feeling on your face he says and then he says uh, a cobwebs broken across it and one eye is weeping from a twig having latched across it and then you will find this uh, in a pathless wood you will also find these twigs of small small bushes they come and strike in your eye open eye and it hurts it hurts and it makes her their eye shed tears as well out of pain and it says from a lash across it and now why this twigs now what what does he express here this pathless wood the life of an adult as he goes through it he experiences he experiences this feeling of and 